Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today, I got a special treat for you. You know that we already went through the regular season, the NFL's regular season. I was only eight and eight in the final week because everybody decided to sit their regulars and, and uh, play their uh, backups. So we are going into the playoffs now. And we had, I mean, we had some crazy games the last week of the year. It was really exciting. And that brings us to right now, we're getting ready for the playoffs. And I have a recurring guest with me, Chris Dufour. And uh, he will be discussing the games with me and he will be giving his picks along with me. Welcome to the show, Chris. It's great to be back, Bob. Thank you for having me. No problem. I always like to get another voice, another authoritative fan's voice. Authoritative. I will try to announce my presence with authority on this program. All right. So uh, first, the first thing I want to do before we get into the picks, I want to discuss the crazy scenario yesterday that played out with the Chargers, the Raiders, and the Steelers. Yeah, that was great. We Going into that week, they said that the Steelers had to win. They needed the Colts to lose to the Jaguars. And then they needed a tie in the Raiders-Chargers uh, game. And we were sitting here thinking to ourselves, well, all right, maybe the Steelers will win, maybe. And... I could see a scenario where that final game gets tied, but there's no way the Colts are losing to the Jaguars. No, you were steadfast in that belief. Sure. I, however, picked, yeah, I well, picked the so Jaguars. So was everybody. <laughs> Not me. I, can't, I still can't believe the Colts won, lost that game. Right. If you think about it, it was pretty crazy. The Steelers won in overtime. Yeah. The Colts somehow managed to lose to the Jags, when all they, which is, I don't know. Yeah. And then... The Chargers scored two touchdowns in the last four minutes and 28 seconds to send that game into overtime. Right. I mean, just the – if you if you did that out with the percent chance of that happening, it had to be less than 1% chance of all that happening. Right. And you know what? Here's a funny thing. I was watching – today I was watching um, um, uh, Pro Football Talk with Mike Florio. One of your favorite programs to watch. It is. And he said he got the sense that in overtime, he thinks Staley blew it by calling that timeout when the Raiders were driving because he got the sense like the Raiders were being stopped. They were being stopped. They were moving a little bit, but being stopped. And he got the sense that they were they were perfectly willing to take the tie. They, they might have just kneeled down and ate up the rest of the time in the overtime period and gone in with a tie, but Staley called the timeout, and that let everybody regroup and then let the Raiders say, well, all right, he called the timeout, let's run one more play, and they got like a nine-yard run that got yeah, Jacobs had a 10-yard run, yeah. Right. I mean, that's the narrative now. Listen, the media, I think this kind of modern-day media, you know, these next-day shows, this is what they do. They drive this narrative that Staley somehow altered the – the you know the the fate of that game by calling timeout and I mean sure I mean I'm, I I think I mean I think Carr came out and said that as much so he's right I mean Carr said they were you know at that point it looked like they were probably content with the tie and then they called the timeout so they altered the game plan a little and said if we can get it with a run we'll get it with a run you know and I mean so obviously in hindsight that. You know, Staley's sitting at home tonight getting them basted because he called a timeout. But in real time, there wasn't anybody up and shouting, oh, my God, he called a timeout. That's going to alter the history of the game because somehow Josh Jacobs is going to run for 10 yards on the next play. No, I didn't hear any of it then. It's, hindsight's twenty twenty. I mean, I you know, I mean, it was, a, it, was a, it was a nice call by the Raiders in that particular moment, and Jacobs came through. And then, I mean, let's give credit to Carlson. That's, I think that was his fourth or fifth walk-off kick this year for a rookie. Yeah. Impressed. And for, and that was 47 yards. It wasn't a – you know, it's not a cheap shot. Right, right, so. right. And another twist in all of this is that if the Raiders 
had tied that game, not only would the two of them have made the playoffs, but the Raiders would have gotten an extra day off because they wouldn't have had to play on Saturday as they do now. They would have been playing on Sunday. Right. Instead. So kind of uh, strange you know, it's just kind of all the twists that went into all of this was just. It was a really cool day in the NFL because there were there was a lot of uh, comebacks and also some unexpected results, like uh, like the Colts losing, right? Yeah. And then you know, if I was the Steelers, I would have gone into yesterday thinking there's no chance in heck I'm getting a playoff spot, but somehow they beat the Ravens in overtime. Right. Uh, and so the, here they are in the playoffs, but. I mean, I loved it because, I mean, we didn't even, you know, let's not even talk about how the 49ers got in the playoffs. They scored with like 10 seconds left to tie it. And then you won it in overtime after our friend, the great Matt Stafford, threw yet another interception. Right. So, I mean, the 49, I mean, the 49ers were, they were down 17 to three in that game at the half. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so that another incredible story that's not getting near enough ink, probably because they can't find a coach to blame for the reason the Rams lost. All right, so let's start with the games of Saturday, January 15th. And the first one is the Raiders, the aforementioned Raiders at... Aforementioned, what a nice word. At the Bengals. Yeah, at the Bengals. This is an interesting matchup. The Bengals thrashed them earlier in the season. So uh, what are you seeing for this one? Yeah, I, I mean... You know, as much as I, you know, the Raiders last night was so exciting. I think the bank, I, I mean, I like the Bengals offense against the Raiders defense a lot. Uh, and the Ra and the Raiders lost one of their better pl defensive players, the defensive uh, end at the end of that game. And then I think it was the end of regulation. They lost him. I don't, I don't know. He got cut off the field. I, so I'm generally when you get cut off the field, my premise is you're not going to play in six days. Right. So that that's going to affect their their run game and their, but more importantly their pass rush on Burrow. I mean, I assume Burrow is going to play. They, that's why they sat him out right. uh, yesterday. The Bengals yeah, I lost to the Browns, so, yeah. and uh, so I mean, I, I I think and the Bengals are at home, and the Bengals have been playing pretty darn well. I mean, I'm going to throw yesterday out. You know, yeah. um, I don't think Mixon played yesterday either, if I'm not mistaken. So Mixon and Burrow were both out. Uh, I like the I like almost any defense against the bank uh, against the Raiders because even though the Chargers defense let them score thirty five points, I mean the Raiders to me, you know they're just in, so inconsistent offensively. And if you get a if you get Carr, Carr's going to make some mistakes almost every game. Uh, so I'm I'm going to take the Bengals for sure. Yeah, yeah, I am too. I'm going with the Bengals in that one. And uh, the next game on Saturday, the 15th, is the Patriots going up to Buffalo to take on the Bills. And, of course, I and I forgot to show the helmets in the first one. Yep. Chuck one. Here, Chuck it. Here they are. Oh. Right. Here Chuck they it. are in this one. Who are you going to pick? You go first on this game. Okay. I am – you know what? I am going to go with the Patriots, even though the Bills are the ones that won the East and they are the host team. I am still going to go with the Patriots because they're a Belichick-coached um, team. You're taking a team just because of their coach? I'm not just because of their coach. What's the I other mean, reason? They did beat the Bills. They did go one and one against the Bills. Yeah, the Bills yeah. took them apart. And in fact, in they the beat when they beat them. They beat them in Buffalo. All right. And, well, and they beat them in Buffalo in a game where they only had to throw four passes. Yeah, so, because there were eighty mile an hour winds. There was Monsoon <laughs> Mary going through. So, and I don't think that's scheduled for Sunday. So, I think they're in trouble. <laughs> We got cold temperatures and snow and all kinds of stuff all up and down the East Coast. It's gonna be gone by Sunday. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be beach weather, Buffalo. All right. Well, I am going with the Patriots. I like the Patriots in this one, but uh, you know what? Are you I think you're like the nutty professor, man. You are the nutty professor. I'm going Bills, Bills, Bills. They are you're going Bills, Bills, Bills. I'm going all in on the Bills in this one. I think Allen and the company are gonna. Uh, well, first of all, I think Allen and company are going to have a lot more success than they did on that Monday night loss. I think it was a Monday night loss or Sunday night loss to the Patriots. 
at home. And secondly, I think I don't think Mac Jones. I'm not going to put this all on Mac Jones. Mac Jones doesn't have enough weapons, and the Bills' defense is going to be able to stymie the Patriots' offense. That's where I'm going. Uh, might be Mac Jones' fault, might not. It's just, I mean, he's a rookie playing in his first playoff game on the road, so I don't expect him to light it up, but uh, I don't think necessarily it's going to be his fault. But I don't see the Patriots scoring more than 14 to 17 points in this game, and I think the Bills are going to put up 21 to 28. That's my, that's my thought. All right. Was that All good right. enough? Yeah. That is, good roll. that is that's good enough, and we can. Let me roll just reiterate: you are the nutty professor. We're just going to roll on to Sunday's games, and let's first, do it. The first one we've got there: the Eagles at yeah. the Buccaneers. Look at that! Look at those two beautiful helmets right there. Beautiful, the shiny. Eagles and the Buccaneers, but I'm going to go with the Buccaneers in this one. Why? Uh, because of Tom Brady, because of the weapons that Tom Brady has, because of the uh, Buccaneers' defense. Um, I just I think that the uh, Eagles are seriously outclassed weapon-wise and really even defensively in this game. You might be right. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm, I mean, picking against the Bucs in the first round of the playoffs at, with them at home is, is silly. And these two teams have met. Uh, before too, so all the first three games we've talked about, they've, they've all met. I think uh, the Bucks have already beaten the Eagles, right? Am I mistaken? In I that? don't that I don't know. I don't recall. Okay. That. I might be wrong. I uh, anyway, I like you know I really like the Eagles uh, and what they did this year. Oh, I and, definitely and, like what they what they did to get to where to get to the yeah. Team. I'm and I'm I was thinking today maybe they could go in and upset the Bucks and I was trying to kind of talk myself into it because I was looking for what's that upset going to be this week? What's because you know there's going to be one at least one of the well, six games. I've definitely but, I've definitely got one coming up. But, all right, well I can't wait to hear it, but well, I'm going to go Bucks. I'm going to go Bucks too for every. Is, so <laughs> what? I said, you think the Patriots over the Bills is an upset. So. Yeah, I definitely do. Yeah. But I got another one in store. But anyway. You got another one cooked up? No, I'm I'm going to go Bucks too. I think – I just don't think they're going to lose. I don't know if they're going to make a run to the Super Bowl again, but I, do, I don't think they're going to lose to the Eagles this weekend. All right. So, see that Eagle helmet? Gone. Chuck it. Chuck it. Gone. It's gone. gone. You gone. gone. You gone. Got it. All right. So, that brings us to the next one. Um, and this is the 49ers are going to Dallas. Let's get oh, I like it. I feel like it's 1991 all over again. 49ers going to Dallas. Yeah, it's yes, it's the uh, it's the uh, 40th anniversary of the catch today. Clark, the the Clark, it's not called the Clark, it's called the catch. What was all right, but what was his first name? Dwight Dwight Clark, Clark. yes, the Dwight Dwight Clark and Joe Montana. Come on. Yes. So anyway, that's going to be that matchup. And who do you have in that game? I'm going to go Cowboys. I like the that's way they're playing. Exactly what I was not going to do. I'm going 49ers. I had a feeling that was what you were that, yes. mumbly gooking about a few minutes ago. I don't know why you'd special. go 49ers. And I want to mention. I can't wait to hear why you're going 49ers. Spill it. I'm going 49ers because they have been playing great football consistently down the stretch. And the Cowboys are wildly inconsistent. They laid a 50 spot last week, but it was on, you know, the B team for the Eagles. And also, we have a mutual friend of ours, Mr. David Mazzini, who is a Cowboys fan, who says to me, he does not like this matchup, and he thinks the 49ers are going to run it down the Cowboys' throat. Run it down the Cowboys' throat. Is that what he thinks? Okay. He thinks. I think the two of you just bought the last ticket to Crazy Town. <laughs> I think the Cowboys are going to win this game by double digits. All right. That's Let's see who's good. taking that train ride Sunday night, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely am. All right, so that brings us to the last game on Sunday, 
And that is going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers. And they're traveling to Kansas City to take on Mahomes and that high-powered Kansas City Chiefs offense. And what are your feelings yes. on this one? My feelings on this one is I wish it wasn't even going to be played. I think Kansas City is going to win like 35-7. to seven. Yeah. It, that that's that's maybe maybe thirty five seventeen something like that, but no, I I don't see an upset here either. I really I think I went chalk all six games. I just don't see an upset this week, and I know there's going to be one, so I will definitely be wrong. I just can't find it. Just can't. can't find it in my head. I was looking, I was looking through. I was you know those files I have in my head. I was going through them. So uh, yeah, I'm going with Kansas City as well. I I agree with you. There's no way. I mean, you know they. They were playing a depleted, beat-up Ravens team with a coach that likes to go for fourth downs all the time, and they had to take them to overtime. Beat it. So, I mean, they could – I think, you know, I like their running back. Was it uh, Nigel Harris or mm – -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if they could find a way to 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 stay on the field for 10 play 80-yard drives all game long consistently, that's their shot, I guess. I don't think they can do it. And so – yeah. Uh, I'm going to, I think the, the Chiefs, this is what it's going to be. It's it's going to be one of those games where it's incredibly difficult for the Steelers to score and the, and the Chiefs are going to be able to score like in 30 seconds. And so that kind of game just wears you down. And so at the end, I think the Chiefs are going to prevail. Yeah, definitely. I think so too. That brings us to the Monday, January 17th game, the last game of the week. Oh, maybe I can find an upset here. The Cardinals are uh, going to L.A. to take – well, really, I I don't think you could say that either team winning this game is really an upset. Yeah, it's got to be close to a, to a, to a pick them, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I know the Rams are home, but it's got to be close. I would say so, yeah. The Rams are at home against the Cardinals. And um, I'm going to go – in this game, I'm going to go with the Cardinals. Really? Yes. I, I think – Okay. That, Do tell. I, Especially with our friend Pickoff Pete there at quarterback for the Rams. <laughs> Pickoff Pete or Yeah, yeah. <laughs> colorblind Matt, as I like to call him. Yeah, I um I mean both teams have been inconsistent. They've played bad football coming down the stretch. But I you know, I I just think that the Cardinals are gonna rise to the occasion on this particular um, game and uh, and beat the Rams. Here's the problem. I I want to pick the Cardinals. I like Kyler Murray. I like the Cardinals. I want to pick them to beat the Rams. Matt Stafford to me has not been consistent, like you said. But Kyler Murray has not been dynamic at all in the second half of the season. I mean, the Cardinals have been really a really just had a really difficult time offensively. They haven't found a gear in eight weeks. I feel like. So I, I believe it or not, and 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 here's before I say this, I'm going to say one more thing. Sometimes Matt Stafford shows up and plays well. Yeah, sometimes, so, sometimes he, does. he does. There, are, he had a game a couple of weeks ago where he was a bright light. So I am going to say to myself and to everyone listening, one more time, Matt Stafford. I think will be a bright light this week, and the Rams and don't and really the other thing is Sony Michelle has been running the ball tremendously well, and I think the Rams are going to really have a balanced attack with him, and I think they're going to be able to run the ball against the Cardinals. So I'm taking the Rams. Okay, all right. Well, there you got it. That's I mean I believe that is all of our picks. That's well, that's every game. I mean, we could we could pick some other stuff. We can pick Tiddlywinks. Who's gonna oh, win the what? marble match tomorrow in your basement? I do want to get I'm we there no games have been played yet in the playoffs. So I want to get your take right now before any games are played. Who do you think ends up being the Super Bowl matchup? Oh boy. Well, let's see. I mean, I don't I mean, let's see. Wow, that's great. Uh, who, I haven't even thought that far ahead, but uh, uh, boy, Packers, Packers, Bucks, Packers got the one, uh, one seed, Cowboys. Hmm, that's really interesting. 
and then the AFC is just a total toss up to me in my head. Yeah, I, the, I mean, the AFC, who knows who's going? I mean, I, it will be the Steelers, and that's all. The Titans need. are the one seed, and I and I don't. I I'm going to take the Chiefs. Okay. I'm going to go maybe. Let me see if I can go outside my bounds a little bit. I might, you know, it's. I could say Chiefs Bucks, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I think the Bucks are gonna are gonna lose. Maybe in the championship game. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go. Hmm, uh, Chiefs, Cowboys. Okay, I'm going Chiefs Packers. Yeah, rematch, that was my other choice. A rematch yeah. of Super Bowl one. It'll probably come down to, in my head, it's going to be Cowboys at Packers, and I think that's going to be tough for the Cowboys, and maybe Prescott doesn't get it done. But uh, I'm going to go Chiefs-Cowboys. And you're going to go Chiefs-Packers. Yeah, exactly. And we will probably both be wrong. (laughs) Well, I mean, we very likely could. Like I said, the only team in this entire field of teams that you can say for sure they're not going to be in the Super Bowl of Pittsburgh. I think yeah. all the other ones, maybe the Eagles also. But I think everybody else has a real viable shot at at getting all the way through this to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I certainly think the Eagles and the Raiders are the long shots in each conference. But, uh, I mean, I mean, in AFC, everybody has a chance. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think the Titans are... I'm going to say this on this program, and then the Titans are probably going to end up in the Super Bowl, but I just don't think they're a Super Bowl team. Well, but, I mean, with Henry back, maybe. I mean, who knows? We'll see. Yeah. We will. We will see. And with that, that's going to be it for me. No. Wait. Hold on. Let's what? promote. Let's not forget. we got to promote our special look at the Baseball Hall of Fame ballot, which we're going to, we, we're going to run yeah. on the 24th of January. That will, yes, that will. You and I taking a look at the ballot, running down who'd we vote for and what we think about the 2022 baseball thing. About that's coming up in a couple of weeks on Sports Magazine. By the Z. way, it's a little teaser here. I I have seen the ballot. Thank goodness, and finally. You said you and you said I could pick up to ten people because that's I did. That's what people did. can right. do. I went through it. I only got six. I'm only going to vote for six. Well, I can't wait to let – that's a great teaser. We'll talk about that. We'll put that up on the 24th on your channel. All right. Yes, we I definitely love it. will. All right. All right. So that is it for me, Sportsman Z. Bob Zolke, signing off.